You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Animal Planet's Whale Wars. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Whale Wars news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Whale Wars! Welcome, welcome. So, um, obviously another amazing episode of (laughs) the Whale Wars. Um, We're watching, Mm -hmm. by the way, our first video webcast for the show. Whale Wars. You know, whales are important, too. Yeah, I know, and so we have to broadcast it out to the world right. in both Good. video and audio form. So we are here for y- you, for both. Um, and uh, let me just uh, congratulate the After Buzzers of the Month, two of whom are sitting two here. Two of the three. Two of the three After Buzzers of the Month are here Because he's always the After Buzzer of the Month. No, that's not me. Of the year, uh, but, uh, of the world. It is Michelle Macedo and John Comerford. Oh, you too. Yes, indeed. They do so many shows, and they do so much for After Buzz. They deserve it. The other one is Ed Bowling, who actually got us back on iTunes. Yes. Way to go, Ed. Thank you, Ed. And, of course, I am Phil Svitek. Now, who is not here? Please answer the question. Who is not not here here today? Yes. I'm going to go out on the limb Mm -hmm. and say it's Stuart. Stuart Stuart Lil. Lil. The whole reason why we have an After Buzz of Whale Wars, Stuart Lil, is not here. Now, Michelle, do you know why Stuart Little's not here? Because everyone should buy my album, MichelleMacedoMusic.com. Uh, thank you for Shameless completely promotion. ruling. Shameless promotion. Okay. Uh, I, from I'll now on, Michelle Macedo's not. I take back everything. I take back the after There's no longer an after You can't take that back. I can't. That's printed on a piece of paper. That's great. <laughs> well, you are no longer you allowed to promote back. your shows on After Buzz TV thanks to your shameless plugs. Well, now that you said that, All right. I'm going to do it more. Now. Um, Stuart Lill, why I'll is tell he you, not here? I'll tell you why. Because one reason and one reason only. Why is that? Because dames is trouble. That's true. <laughs> That's now, why. Do you know why? Why is Stuart? Because he hates whales. Sure. Actually, Stuart Lill, I get a text. I let me. I gotta go yeah, into the read archives. This. Yes. Um, I apologize for those of you watching. Yes. Um, as I kind of go through this, but Stuart Lill sends me a text about Tuesday, um, Tuesday night. Uh, I can't wait to hear what he said. Let's see. Where is he? Where is he? Stuart. First of all, if, for those of you who don't know, Stuart Lil loves uh, Will Wars. He's been a fan of the show since its inception. And he's the one that got Phil uh, addicted to it uh, for what? Four, this is the four seasons for you? Fourth so season. Fourth season for you. Uh, and f- it was because of that uh, that uh, Will Wars is now an after Yeah, and he was here last at podcast that we did. and um, Yeah, the only one that he's been to. And is he elevated the, the show so one? much. Yeah, because he had so much history and so much knowledge of the, uh, the show. Uh, the show if, he was, if Whale Wars was a boat, then he would be the Paul Watson of the boat. He would be. And now here's what I get. Hey, Phil, <laughs> this may come as a surprise to you. I'm leaving L.A. tomorrow, and I'm moving to the Philippines. I wanted to drop by later or tomorrow morning before I hit the road and say bye. What works best for you? Okay, and why is he going to the Philippines? Because of a girl. That's why Dames is trouble. Are you kidding? He gets to go to the Philippines. That's awesome. That's amazing. No, no, no. He's not going on vacation. He's not going on vacation. I know, but he gets to go move there. That's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, so you'd like to go experience. to the Philippines? You'd like to move there? To, I mean, to visit. Yes. Yeah. So you he's don't want to move there. Yeah. Right, but he's visiting because the love of his life obviously is over there. And who wouldn't like you know, you gotta live all over the world to be to be more knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. My parents definitely are Stuart, like, let travel me tell you, is no. education. And that's what you're gonna be doing with your life then, traveling? Well, i I'm gonna travel a uh, lot, yes. <laughs> but you're not but, gonna live. Now, the, 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 <laughs> Knock on wood. Oh, my God. What is with your comments? Not going to live around the world is what he meant. 
the the the, the problem was I mean, oh, I can't yeah. believe he brought this up and and you know, I really wanted Stu back here. Yes. Now that I don't know if this is a promotion or a demotion, yeah, but he is exactly the sure. Filipino correspondent. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that's Filipino true. Yeah, so that's um, awesome. there's a lot of water around the Philippines, all those islands. So maybe there's a lot of whales there. I don't know. Well, I we, bet you they are. You know what? We are. do have. I gotta say, we do have somewhat of a Philippine Filipino presence. Uh huh. And so, thank you all. <laughs> In that region, who support Great. After Buzz, we, we love you. Start speaking to and you know what? Support yeah. st- if you know Stuart Lil. I don't want to say the racist comment he said, but um, that's good. Thank you for avoiding that. Um, nonetheless, making it but so also, much worse. Thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> if you see Stuart Lil, say hi. Now you'll know it's Stuart Lil because he's a white blonde guy. I didn't yeah, want to like say they don't it. have that in the Philippines. They don't. They totally do. But, but you'll don't. know Stu because he will not look at you, and he will be looking down and not able to speak. He'll be stuttering. Nice. Well, no, enough about looking Stu. at his computer and typing. Oh, yeah, he'll, he'll have his computer out while way, he's walking. we've given Stu more time of day than he's given us, so thank you, Stu. Congratulations on your newfound life. Actually, yeah, we wish him well. We hope he has so a great we time. We Godspeed to you. Yeah, and I just wish you didn't... St- like you didn't have to text me. Yeah, you could have called. You're feeling jilted. <laughs> Phil is feeling jilted. Oh no. This is yeah. But anyway, also we're back on iTunes. We know we've been uh, down for a long time. We're finally back, so you can listen to us thank there. Thank you, Ed, for that. Yes, thank you, Ed Bowling. And so now, without further ado, well worse. Well worse. So we pick up where we left off in terms of um, the small boats being lost at sea. Yep. Last for, week. for 12 hours. 12 hours. And supposedly 13. Some people threw, threw around 12 or 13. 12 and a half. Mm-hmm. And obviously it was a big kind of cliffhanger last week with the last footage filmed. I know. Of we the didn't crew. know. We didn't know. I was we freaking out. And then they ruined know. it for me. I'm sorry. I was I, so I ruined it for you. hooked. Uh, I, but again, <laughs> I, I mean, did you not even hear our commentary? I love how the, we talked about this whole thing throughout the show. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until after the mics went off that Michelle understood why we knew they lived. <laughs> and that was for the fact that they no, were interviewed we, we after the fact. Me. We, I talked, was, we talked about it on the show. I was saying that they did the interview. You got part of it. Is that on the show? Can we yes. do that from online? <laughs> Can uh, we take that off the internet? No. Unfortunately, that lives. Yeah, that lives. Yeah. That's 80,000 people who have Your suspension of disbelief is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It I, is, I don't know of anybody that has a much, as much suspension of disbelief as you. That's such a compliment. Thanks. Every I movie guess. you go to, you must think is actually happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. That's great. That's fun. You know, I put myself in the situation. You do. I know. That's probably really healthy in the acting. Mm-hmm. It is. I don't know if no. anything... I felt they were more successful with their Chris Altman helicopter scenario from last week than they were with this, because... They kind of played it out. Uh, they let this one ride a little bit longer than just the teaser, whereas yeah. last week, you know, with Chris Altman and the helicopter, you know, it started the episode, and then he got back, and then we went to... Mm-hmm. The world is a vampire. vampire. With this one, we kind of went through more, oh, and then man, they got back. I thought you were going to keep going. Well, Jesse won't play me my music. He hates oh. me <laughs> and my music. Um, Again, just kidding. The jilted love. Just kidding. I love. I love. Um, Hasn't anyway. been a good week for Phil. It's been. It's been a hectic. Jilted week. twice, and now three times. Enough about me. We're here to talk, but but, but we're here about about the whales. Oh yeah, yeah, it's about the whales. Yeah. And um, so they finally get back. And by the way, I made this comment, and I'm going <laughs> to say it again. Imagine being the guy. You're sleeping. You're expecting these people to come out. So come back. So you're kind of taking a nap. And then you just hear a knock on your door of like, hey, they're back. Yeah, but I'm still tired. You mean the guys that have been on the small boats? No, the guys that are have been on the Bob Barker. Uh-huh. Safe, warm. Oh, yeah, safe and warm. That's right. We have to go get those guys that are freezing their butts off. Ah, oh, balls. But I got to get so out of bed. <laughs> On, uh, five more minutes. He was like, <laughs> five more minutes. He was like, it's 8.30 in the morning. That's right. They've been out there for 12 and a half. What's 12, what's 12 hours and 45? Exactly. Come on. And Please like the wait. doctor said, they could have been out for another two At hours. Least, yeah, they had another fine. two hours before. And they were really soaking, critical. but like dry off. Like, yeah. you know? 
It happens all the time. Like, dogs just shake it off. There you go. Rub some <laughs> dirt on Okay. <laughs> Maybe not that. Well, uh, so Mikey, the guy we were always worried about, he gets sent to the doctor immediately. What what I like? Core temperature of 90 degrees. Damn. Wait, was that the guy that was in the bag? Yeah. You know what? It's interesting. It, I'm going to kind of go off on a tangent, but uh, you guys ever see the movie Flatliners? Yes. You can go on tangent. Have you seen the movie Flatliners? No. Okay, well, John has, and for those of you who haven't, it's basically a group of scientists. It's ours, Kevin Bacon, Keith Sutherland, uh, Julia Roberts. Why no one's heard of this movie is beyond yeah. me, I guess. Now and they you purposely uh, put themselves, they allow, allow them to put themselves in a situation where they're actually dying. Yes, and when so they, they lower their temperature, what, yeah, they lower this experience what it is to die. And then the others, the other ones who are uh, helping them do this, revive them at the last minute. Ew! What? Ew! Yeah, and, Why and, and, do they want to do scientists. that? They want to know what death oh is. My God. They want to know that 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 they want to. They're yeah, living because on the religion the failed. Um, whatever, all the all the yeah. things failed. Now, interestingly enough, you had the opportunity to do that here. Right here, yeah, that's yeah, right. He you could have let the guy flatline. Yeah. That's right. But he's. But no, they had to bring him back. Oh my God, that really freaks me well, out. Well, they could have brought him back, but just ex- you know, fi- find yeah, out yeah. what death was all about. Right. The title of that movie really freaks me out too. Flatliners, yeah. Yeah, it was actually a psycho thriller. But anyway, so uh, we're actually watching Mikey right now on the on the screen here, shaking um, his butt off. Yeah, he's with the doctor who is the doc- <laughs> so overwhelmed that doctor was. <laughs> well, in another two hours, it could have been critical. Well, he could have died. You By know, the way, I, lo- I mean, it just goes to show that, I mean, these people, uh, I'll give them credit. Um, they're not, God, some, most of them are not meant for the camera. No. You know? They're not. No. They don't know how to speak to it, and but because all they're there to do is do, do their, their job, job amazing. Yeah, they, they're, yeah, they don't care about the rest of it. That is such an understatement. They are so awkward. Well, okay, but why are they awkward? I'm trying to pay tribute to that yeah, they're versus awkward that because they're they spend no time for yeah. the camera they don't care about no, that no totally part of it. but yeah. you you're just saying that they're not meant to i know that but it's just they're just so awkward i'm agree i'm agreeing with you in a very high strange five. way no one heard that there we hey, go high five michelle almost says it shakes as much as mikey does i know that's so funny if i hope that i pass out so that you guys feel bad well, uh, we're going to let michelle. you flatline but we'll bring you back Michelle's kind of feeling bad, but whatever. All right, so onwards. So we got we got that out of the way. That's now, like the doctor. And who's the other? He <laughs> like doctor. died, or, but he almost died. It was like the intense level of hypothermia. Yeah. No, it All was right. only a mild and moderate yeah, hypothermia. Indeed. That's what he said. Now, who's the other guy that uh, was having the same? Um, uh, S- Sammy. Yeah, Sammy. I don't, I, Something like Sam. that. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember Sam. what his temperature was. They said it in Fahrenheit. Uh, I mean, Celsius, you know what? I, I do have kind of. It was g- it was way more normal. Yeah, but the I feel like the problem with it, uh, the kind of issue right now that they're dealing with is there's a lot of plot, and they actually spend a lot of time with the Bob Barker. Yes. Um, this whole season, you know, we kind of get the Steve Irwin and the Gorgira every now and then, but I feel uh, the reason why, I don't know, I mean, I, I've watched, obviously, all the seasons, and, you know, now you have, s- before, Paul Watson was featured all the time. Yeah, I know. He's you know, not really featured. He's not. And really? uh, P- Peter Hammerstad, Matt Holland, um, uh, Potsy. Mm-hmm. You know, you sort of knew all these people's names. Now, I don't really know. I like uh, the doctor. I just, the doctor. Yeah. You, you still have Potsy, but if you, like for you guys that haven't seen the, necessarily all the episodes, Potsy doesn't mean but, anything. But how, how would they feature him? What would he do? You said he was just <laughs> in his room. He'd just hang out in his room and on the computer. So, uh, well, he did like the sit down interviews. And, oh, okay. You know, that's how you feature these guys. Got it. And they're yeah. kind of giving their opinions and things like that. Because they they hardly ever do any of that with him. Paul no, Watson? They, yeah. He, they don't really well, do sit down Well, he's Jabba the Hutt. Like, he oh. sits there waiting for his phone with his like weird glasses. He's like, tell me information. Yeah, he, he actually, I mean, he, he does a lot. Um, this they, has it, nothing to do with what he does. It's just like what it looks like. I understand, but how boring would it be to feature him on the computer, much like Stuart Lil would be doing? <laughs> yeah, are you that's great. calling what Stu Lil does boring? Well, no, yeah, the act said, of the it is boring. Of it is boring. Oh, I mean, okay. I'm just saying he looks like Jabba the Hutt. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so yes, that is kind of how the show is, and there's just you know that's why we don't know the characters. That's why we don't know what 
Sammy, Sandy, whatever. Yeah, they're interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Wait, so how, because I forget all the time, how do you remember which boat is which? Because they just have a bunch of, like, random shots of people walking around, well, looking out the window. Usually they so, show the captain, or at least mm. the people that you, I mean, because there are two or three people on the boat, the ship, excuse me, that you that I recognize, and I know what ship I'm on based on those people. And you also get the lower third. Yeah, usually they'll say Bob yeah. Barker or whatever. Now, uh, question. Let me ask you this. You guys, uh, I lost I, uh, lost the train of thought. But, um, oh, it was the fact of the Bob Barker's captain. He yeah. said, you know, yeah, we have to risk our lives. We just have to do it responsibly. Yeah, what is that? To, and and yeah. you guys, you know, I, jumped I, on that. I, I know it all over. So I jumped let's all talk all about that. that. I mean, what does yeah, that we, mean for we, you? Yeah, we were going to risk our lives, but we need to do it in a safe and responsible way, which I find hysterical because how do you risk your life in a safe and responsible way? Yeah, you don't. The, the idea that you're risking in a safe way is kind of counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. So, it, so therefore no, it doesn't it's not exist. Possible. I don't think it does. I mean, how do you take a risk if you're being safe? No, you don't. I... That's definitely that definitely doesn't make sense. They're just they're just crazy. It's contradictory. I it's mean, they're just like trying the, to. The more safe you are, the less risky you are. Yeah. The more I mean, risky, yeah. The less I mean safe. do you, just, okay? So and going like back responsible, to m- you're responsible for your own life. Well, in this case, I don't think they are. I mean, they they are to some degree, but they don't. I, I don't they're really out there. think they care. They're, they're they, like in Antarctica. They're being willing crazy. to you know, put their life. In I want to see. I want to see this. The, the the thing the contract they have to sign in order to volunteer. Because yeah, that I mean, would be I imagine it. It would be very interesting in the regard. Is it much like um, skydiving, where literally when you yeah, do you skydiving, sign, it's, you sign everything away? Yeah, but skydiving, it literally says, by doing this activity, you know you can die. Yeah, that's it. That's all it says. You, you, your uh, family, your whomever can't receive any kind of payment from yeah. us <laughs> if you do I die. went, I went in the jungle. Yes. and lived in like a little hut for like a month. And they made us sign a thing. My brother set this up. Um, they did. Uh, they gave us a paper that said if we die, then it's not their fault at all, yeah. because there were like bugs and snakes and a scorpion under a yeah. pillow, and what it was. Were you doing I didn't in sleep. This jungle? Uh, my my brother like booked the vacation. It, it was, was a vacation. Yeah. Oh, must be fun. This girl. This is the girl who, if she sees a spider, freaks out. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but that's where I saw. We were going. Um, no spiders on these boats. Cave, what's it? Caving, and we went in the cave. Plunking. Uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I was in the cave and I saw a green thing like three feet away from me, and I was like, "Oh, that's weird." That little green thing in the water, and I was like talking to the guide person. And I was like, oh, "Check out this snake," and he was like, started to freak out and was like screaming at me. And then when we got mm. out of it, it turns out that it's. Latin America, Central America's most poisonous snake, and it was like swimming towards me. And then we got up to some Mayan ruins that were still like intact. All right. Okay. If you'd like to hear more about <laughs> Michelle Macedo's life, email check Phil out, and ask. No, check out MichelleMacedoMusic.com. Mm hmm. That story's in uh, there. Now, that was a nice plug. Yes. Anyways, so. Her strategy. This yeah. By the way, so uh, uh, on our screen right here, as we're watching slash doing our podcast, uh, I like their kind of graphic shots of their strategy. Yeah, and I I live for this, but and I don't I can't even fathom how this how we're still having it. It's interesting when you get other people involved with Whale Wars. I thought it's a very simple show, and you can get anyone involved in at any moment because they kind of do. A, I, I thought a very nice recap of like. The Japanese are doing this, yeah. and they say it's for whaling, but they these sea shepherds yeah. say this, and then you're pretty much caught up. Yeah, that's so not that's so cool. much for Michelle. She's still we Whoa. we were still trying to understand mm. why it was a bad thing that the Japanese whaling ships were tailing. I was so focused on what they're doing that I didn't read all of the stuff that they said. I didn't like. I did write it down, and you guys didn't write it down at all, but you knew it. Every episode, I mean, they've always said the problem with them being tailed is that they can relay the mess- the, relay the coordinates to the mothership that they're always I trying. I told you not to judge me before I asked that question. I'm not judging you. I'm merely... Uh, oh. you're, you're, you're making a judgment. <laughs> well, fine. I'm making a judgment, but I'm at least not pre-judging. 
So whose fault is that? <laughs> you just that just what? doesn't make sense. And you try to turn around, yeah. but why don't you tell me the simplified version of what you're trying to say? Simplified version of what I'm trying to say is I. This is the reason why I love the show. Um, it's the reason why I I like um, TV shows about business, politics, law, crime, you like the strategies. Yeah. yeah, and that excites me. And for this, you know, I mean, it is. Well, it is. It is a war. Today they were doing a chess game part of it. The chess game yeah. part of it. Okay, if they're here and we can get away, then we can go do this. But that could be a decoy. So and so they were playing all that game and stuff. And Steve, er, not Steve, sorry, Paul was deciding. All right, since that uh, uh, whaling ship is going to be leaving us, one of us should take a run and try to get out of the radar. Yeah. And he did, and it played. It paid off for him this time. And, and so I, I like that part of it. There, all this strategy, all this chess game. If they're going to do this, then we should zig. If they're going to zag, we should, you know, whatever. Yeah. That part of it. Because it's battleship. Now, question is, is the bunker a decoy? Do they I have another? So. No? Do no, uh, based on the way they were responding, because I would think that if they weren't a decoy, mm -hmm. they would have been all crazy on the phone. Like, what the hell are you guys doing? Get away from us. Mm -hmm. Stop this nonsense. What are you trailing us for? I would think something like that would have happened. Mm. But they, they were acting as if they knew why they were being trailed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And ergo, they're acting guilty because they know. And they said a lot of, or the captain said a lot of maybe, and I don't know. That's because his English is not so good. Well, that's what I was thinking. And then they're like so into Where's like the sand? attacking Where, it's someone. It's the San Laurel, right? Is it Panama? San Laurel. San Laurel. San Laurel. Pan, it, it, it's, it's from Panama. Yeah. Okay. So. Out of Panama. All right. Well, well, I mean, that's pretty good evidence, not pretty good evidence, that's uh, circumstantial evidence that because it, it uh, was in port in Japan at the same port yeah, where the that's Nisamara true. was, and it left roughly the same time. So that's it's pretty good. That's true. Yeah. But also, they, I think from a certain light, if they saw an iceberg and it looked a little bit like a boat, I think they would attack that too. <laughs> They're but they really didn't attack. excited. They just, they, yeah, they were all excited. They couldn't they do the circle. Just have some and fun. Just, they were like so Tell happy. the kids downstairs. Yeah, this is going to be crazy. Yeah. Just, and I go, and then they just went across the bow. And I, was, I know. That's what I was thinking. Then what are, what what were they going to do? Just I don't know. intimidate they, them. Obviously, they weren't going to do any prop fouling because they, they weren't positive. So the, all you can do is just follow them. Yeah. And Which makes for some very interesting TV in the sense that that's not really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, well, you yeah. know. That's oh like, yeah, but then if they don't get to the other boats, they can't give them fuel. By the way, no, you you could. I mean, here's the thing: you can make anything exciting. I mean, that, that, that's the problem the right with music, a lot of music, the right editing. No, there's a, that's <laughs> the problem with a lot of movies. You can take the most uh, sophisticated and interesting concept ever, and you just tell it so poorly that it just sucks. Or you take the most mundane mm -hmm. and tell it so well that wow, it's riveting. And you know what? I if they. Re I'm telling you, if they really played their cards right, then the bunker went left. And so we had to go left. And oh my God. And then they went right. And so we had to go right. Yeah. And, and unless anybody was standing back looking at this going, what What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, for, for Michelle, I'm sure it would work because she'd be so involved in it. She, her yeah. suspension of disbelief, she would just be right there with them going how exciting this was. For a guy like me, who is a little bit more cynical, I'll be standing out there going, no, you're just going left and following him. What's the deal? No, I mean, yeah. You just got to you know, pretend. Yeah. Whale Wars needs more people like Michelle because then they could yes. literally be like, oh, my God, they went left. Like, we, we don't know what to do. Get okay, over okay. there. So, so we, we had a big meeting, and we came exactly. up with what to do. And so we went right. Yeah. And then we went left. And, and I'd be the guy going, why are they going back to an iceberg to wait for their motherships when the iceberg moves? <laughs> how can that? How can that be a point of reference? See, yeah. I, I would totally say that too. You just gotta call in and yeah. and give your two cents, and I'll totally make it interesting. You know, really, you're just saying that I can make well, it. Like here, interesting. this is the thing that this is the kind of strategy thing that that drives me crazy. Okay, they have a strategy that says, okay, the small boats are gonna go out there and uh, m m mess with the uh, Big boats. whalers that are the following Yushin. us. The Yushin okay? Maras. That are following us so that we can get away. Yeah. How does that possibly work? Here's why. This is why I asked the question. So these small boats, they mm. do this. The big go big boat gets away. Well, where do the small boats go? They know eventually that big boat has to come back to get the small boats. Those small mm. boats can't survive. So they don't have to go chase the big boat. They just wait. Yeah. 
So how how is how is that a good strategy? You should email Paul Watson. I think he's on his computer. Oh, they, you know, uh, you know, it would have been really really funny is after that um, once the, the once the small boat crew got back, like, hey guys, listen, this is gonna really suck, but we have a lead, <laughs> and we need you to go after yeah, them. Exactly. So Ooh. and uh, this is um, this is what you signed up for. We're gonna yeah. put two bags on them. It's gonna be fine. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to do the prop fowler thing again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. No. no. It did So, obviously. All right. Awful. So, so okay, so let's go back to the gorge here. Did and you? this is one of those ones that I felt uh, they didn't quite do right. You know, we were always questioning, wait, do, do they have their other? Yeah, they didn't, they didn't spell fixed. that out for us. They should have talked about it more. They assumed that we knew that that uh, that uh, one prop for the Gojira was still inactive, uh, and we and that's the problem. We knew that, and we were wondering, wait, did it get fixed or not? Yeah, right, because it was the, still moving, so still that catching same up. Question. So it obviously so. could move at a certain speed and was faster than those other ships. And they just needed to take. I would have loved if they had put that up on the board again and say, here's where this tanker is. We're way over. It. Even on one engine, we can go this fast and we'll be we'll catch. That I thought would have been cool. I think yeah. they can do a lot more like visual stuff because, to me, it well, that's the big. Mo that's actually like a lot of money. So, but to do the little, yeah. Oh, there. Yeah, uh, how much does it cost to shop. put this boat on? For uh, all the cameramen on in the yeah, Antarctic. After Effects, for kind of. <laughs> well, uh, it look. It's. I I would venture to say that the camera guys don't get paid too much. No. So oh, not yeah, really. Well, because it's reality. But I'm saying like. It can't be that expensive to do the little graphics. Okay, unfortunately, literally, this show, I mean, they have a budget, but they Are don't have a budget. you just, like, trying to... Just no, use? I'm just telling you the facts. Like, they can't really spend too much money on this show. Well, anyway, if, if money wasn't an issue, I think that I would be less confused if it was more visual. Because for now, it just looks like... We're just like moving around well, in a boat. Let's say, let's say it's true that they didn't have the budget for that, which is fine. They don't have the budget to, to do a graphic, or whatever. But they could have easily done it in a voiceover. Yeah, they they used the guy mm, all the true. time. They could have, and that would have been an easy fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or had one of them like explain it. It's like putting puzzle pieces together of what they're all saying. I also think it helps build the tension when you really tell the story. Yeah, just really get. Oh shit! They can't keep going. How are they gonna catch up? Exactly. Yeah, I think while this this season has been really great, but I think the problem that they're finding is that early on it was very simple to kind of tell the story. It was one yeah. ship, one crew, and you just and you had that. one goal. Mm -hmm. This you're kind of trying to pick moments, and I I, I think they're kind of story wise they're kind of flustered of how do we do this now. Yeah, if there is a season five, I think they'll have that figured out. Yeah, I think so too. Because I think they're just having problems with the narrative. They don't really know the story that they want to tell. And you know, obviously this has already happened. Yeah. So they can go back and figure out how to tell the story. Yeah. But they are they, they there all year? No, no, there's a whaling season. Yeah. What do you know three. what it is? What the whaling months? season? In it's, January? Uh, yeah, it's our winter is their summer. Mm. So and they're in the southern right. hemisphere. Yeah. Because it's right. I'm I'm really excited for our after buzz field trip to the Antarctic. We're gonna broadcast live. Mm hmm DJ Jesse, put on your gloves. How do you feel about that? We're gonna follow the Emperor. We're gonna do the March of the Penguins. It'll be March of the After Buzzers. <laughs> um, Morgan good. Freeman is gonna narrate it. Yeah, yes, he, he is. is. Awesome. Let's call him up. Uh, as long as we bring a penguin home. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Another mascot. Buzz can play buzz. with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, uh, I forget, where, where did we leave off? Oh. Well, we were talking about the Gojira with its one engine, and it caught up to the big Sun Laurel. Oh, yes, yes. And um, then, unfortunately... Then all of them. There. I thought that was a good strategy, too. If they really felt that that was, and obviously they did, they felt that that was a, a, a fueling ship uh, for the other uh, Nisamaro, Nishamaro, Yushamaro, all those ships. So they were just going to hang out. Okay, fine. If the hounds, you know, if, they, if we can't find the fox, we'll have the fox come to us. Yeah. Well, I thought, I thought for me, and I know I kind of predicted this. I never thought that they would leave all three ships together. Now I knew the Gorgira was going to be sent off anyway. Yeah, but why, would, why day, would you not use it? And the, yeah, but at the end of the day, I always figured it would just be one ship trailing. Yeah, so you didn't need you, all three. Exactly, you just need the one. 
and, and that's you know because we have the small boats as well. So yeah. that's what I thought would happen too. But I just love that they all converged. I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Finally, I mean, I don't know how big this area is that they've been in, but I, I thought it was great that they finally converged. Well, they're always uh, whenever we get coordinates or whatever they they kind of say it's it's usually on average fifty miles that they're always apart. Yeah. So. And then they sent the other guy back. To Gojira. Yeah. What are you talking about? Did we talk about that? No, we're no, about, we're to, get about to. to talk about that. So, would you like to segue into that? Well, they sent the other guy back. <laughs> Good job segueing. Yes, so they sent the other guy back. <laughs> the Gojira <laughs> is experiencing more technical difficulties. Yeah, it's like, what? what the, I thought, what oh is my this, God. Was this Gojira made by Toyota? What's the problem <laughs> here? I don't know. The plumbing was all wrong, I guess, because there's the, water the splitter spraying. or whatever the heck it is that they were talking about. The and separator, I think, is what they call it. Whatever or? it was, they were like, basically, and it seems like every time it's one of these, basically, we needed to run the ship. Basically, it's the most important part on the boat, like, and so basically all of it's, their. It's, no, I love, I love them. It's the, extremely frustrating uh, because yeah. I want this. Sh- I mean, the ship's amazing. Yeah, it's really fast. It looks cool. It's called Gojira, mm-hmm. and the son of a, it just doesn't work. I mean, it's yeah. li- as they said, it's literally their greatest weapon in this and fight. And their and for, heel. The, uh, for the audience, <laughs> it's the most exciting part of the show. Yeah, what well, could be? Yeah, and so, it's lame. It's limp. Yeah. It's, you know, it's but how do they not put someone on it or have like a plan? I just don't understand why it's falling apart if it's supposed to be their newest and their best. Well, well it was, it's their, it was, it's their it was newest, in, but it doesn't mean that the ship itself is the ship's been, not new. But it is not as old as the other ships. It's yeah. fairly new and it was working great. I mean, the thing was really fast in the first couple of episodes. The thing was mo- motoring like crazy. So that part was interesting and exciting. But since it's had its problems, it's just getting worse for them. And I love oh. the manual. The guy, yeah, uh, the so-called the expert, oh, yeah. flips through the manual. That's amazing. Yeah, this says we, yeah, it's unfixable. And, and I'm wondering if he really is an expert or is just, you know, because they may be, how, I mean, this is not easy to get people to commit to this. And, yeah. You know, and, and who knows if they didn't really have an engineer or mechanic, but this is the best we could do. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> But he's the only one willing to sign up and be a vegan the whole thing. Like, um. Right? Exactly. He's looking through the manual. I just go, hmm. Hey, step one. You're looking through the manual here? Uh, <laughs> you know, because I've worked on boats and ships and stuff like that. And Steve, who does. Uh, uh, Steve Bottomley. Steve Bottomley, who does men of a certain age. He works on ships as well, boats. Uh, so w- w- when you know your way around them, you don't really need to look at a manual. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was wondering. That's like if a astronaut was looking at a manual for the freaking space shuttle. Space shuttle. Well, that, that would that make one me you might really have nervous. To. There's I mean, a few parts on that. Yeah. But it was kind of s- s- shockingly sad. Like, but really? I know. They had no <laughs> idea. They panicked for sure. They're like, oh, Paul, what do we do? No, well, I, I love so how some of them out. panic, but like always, they're kind of, and for those of you watching, they kind of just lean back, and I'm going to take my mics, I guess, and they're like, yeah, this is, this is really frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're just kind of lounging around, talking about how frustrating this is. They always look is. like they're lounging around, and yeah. Uh, you're like, yeah, this this really dampers our whaling, huh? Exactly. And then it like, and you're like, okay, to, do you even care? Then yeah. it cuts to like one of the guys that we know, and then like a random person that they're with. I feel like there's always like some random people every few shots that I'm like, where did you come from? Yeah, and those are the guys who care. Oh, that guy's on it. It's all good. That guy's yeah. on it. Yeah. And frustrating, I'm sure it was extremely frustrating for them because they're so committed to this, but it's frustrating for us because yeah. we want this thing to go find. They've, they've done a decent job of telling us and getting us involved to, to want them to find the ship, to stop the whaling, and we haven't seen enough of that yet. Yeah. I mean, I wonder, what's interesting, because in the past you've always had like a gauge on how much whaling we've stopped. Yeah, exactly. Here, we just know we don't we're have like a clue. week five. Yeah, and they've and been being trailed for three weeks or whatever it is. So, well, how much whaling? And they haven't caught up to the processing ship at all. So, the we other don't know two how much whalers whaling's been done. Yeah, the other whalers, mine's, you know. The only rain. good thing about the whole thing is usually one or two of the whaling ships has been involved in trailing or tailing our good guys. So, they haven't been whaling at all. Yeah. So who but who knows how many whales? And maybe this is this is my sick twisted mind. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. But um, I want our guys to catch one of the ships in the act of whaling. Yeah. And no, well, here's the thing. I, I say it's sick twisted because in in the regard of like that means some whaling's going on. So right. for all I know, right now no whaling has gotten done True. because of all of this action. But 
you know, I don't but know just, that. I just need an indicator. I, I would like to be. I'd like to experience to view them stopping some whaling. That's what yeah. I would like to see. Yeah, it busted. was interesting to see the prop fouling, all those kinds of stuff, putting on the uh, uh, tracker, all those kinds of things are interesting. But I want to see the wars. Yeah, I want to see them exactly. stopping them doing that, so that I can say that these guys are really out there doing it. Yeah. And right now I haven't been able to. They're see lounging. It. I mean, they're doing things. We're doing this a lot of checking the horizon. It is very. Is, this is. It's a lot of binoculars. Yeah, binos. I lo- yes, I had to explain that one too. I like that binos. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. use that. It sounded like dinos. Yeah. Is that really that bad? Uh, I believe they had a subtitle for that one. So. And he was, it was. Maybe if he said <laughs> field glasses, that would have been. Nice. <laughs> um, the one thing about the tracker that was driving me crazy too. This tracker, which they they oh, they risked their explained. lives to put on this ship. Only sends a beacon every or, or a signal every four hours. Yeah, that's on average. That's Mind completely you. crazy. Crazy. Because yeah. uh, you know how far a ship can get away. I mean, you're tracking one thing in four hours. Four hours. That's well, a long I know that, time that to get a next signal. Four hours is a long time to be far away when you're like sinking in the yeah. Antarctic and having hypothermia. No, but like. They could. They're, they're, my point is, with the technology we have today, that's as quick as I know. That that's what I was be. thinking. Like today, they couldn't get anything better. Anything. It might as well be on uh, galleys out there. Yeah. <laughs> or galleys or galleons. 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 Okay, great. There's a dog commercial that but, yes, we care about animals. So I, I'm I'm kind of shocked by that, and 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 then I'm I'm asking myself, okay. Is that the best one they could get because of budget or whatever? Or is that the best one available? It can't be the best one available. I'm sure we have no. something. I'm sure our military has something way better than that. Yeah. But that thing was huge. I could understand it if it was a small thing that didn't have a huge battery source, couldn't send out a large signal, whatever. But that thing was huge. And by the way, that's like the uh, old... Di- it very much retro in the regard of like, okay, you have this huge thing. But it doesn't do a lot. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, it's yeah. debilitating it's like you in the fact that like people can big, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people can <laughs> see it, so it's easily oh yep, Giant Japanese computers. oh uh, the yeah, sea shepherds it. did it. it great. Although I thought one thing that was good about the uh, the tracker was that it was roughly the same color mm-hmm. as the hull of the uh, uh, Japanese. So they would have painted the right color, yeah, right? And can if they if they didn't know, I don't know if anybody because you have to look over pretty far this to on the the aft end of that thing. Well, it's interesting. So, I wonder, like, and, and it didn't look like anything. I mean, it just yeah. looked like a, a, it looked like part of the ship. Well, I what, what kind of really angers me and frustrates me is the fact that no matter what on these other ships, not the Sea Shepherd ships, but the other ones, uh, the Japanese ones, you never see any people. Yeah, yeah, they don't. Like, I know. Maybe they didn't sign the the, the yeah, waiver. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> they didn't. They the whalers probably didn't sign release forms. Release forms. Yeah, they yeah, that them. sucks. They sent them over with well, the spud But, you know, gun. all the time, every time we've seen um, clips from past seasons, there, you, you, you see the, the, the seamen, the sailors. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sailors. Uh, or whatever, whalers, whatever the, you want to call Japanese them. The Japanese whalers? Yeah, you yeah. see them throwing, they're, they're throwing the, the bomb, the, the uh, stink bombs back. They're, they're there, they're running the you cannon. You see their face, though? Yeah, well, you, as much as you can. Well, I mean, we're not on the ship, so you're, you know, your yards. That's what I want. Someone want to see jump on the ship. That's well, war. That was, yeah. That's go pirate see war. But my point one. is, we've seen that. Every time we've seen these guys. Yeah. yeah. Go see season one, thanks. But every time this time when we've been close to the ships and they've been, you know, using the stink bombs or the, the potato cannon, whatever it is, we haven't seen anybody. Yeah. So. Yeah, they need to step it up. Yeah. Well, it's going to be exciting. Oh, I guess we'll save that for prediction. Well, all right. So let's kind of get to the last part of, like, we're finally kind of moving forward. We've succumbed to the idea that the Gojira is not going to be with us for a little bit as it goes yeah. to the port. Yeah. And Going back to port. And we just successfully got out of, uh, got a, you know, lost the tail. Paul Watson is as happy as I've ever seen him in four seasons. Yeah, he was a glow. <laughs> and uh, John, give me some smart writer crap about smart Paul Watson. Crap. Come on, <laughs> how would you describe yeah, Paul Watson give it in that to moment? Us. Ebullient. That's oh. all you got. Just one adjective. Uh, oh my god! Well, I thought that was a pretty good one. You got one? Don't let don't let him make you feel like that. Uh, he does. Paul I'm, Watson I don't feel like was ebullient. Not and ebullient. Hit- what is it? How do you say? Ebullient. Fair e- enough. Ebullient? I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. He was like a kid on Christmas morning. Oh. 
Batman, who for 12 years has been asking for whatever toy a, Barbie a Jeep. Red Rider PB gun. Yes. And he, gun. and he finally <laughs> received it after those 12 years and tears of joy on his face, yet the biggest smile. Yeah, but I can't. Why was he so happy? Because his plan finally worked. I don't know. Yeah, I was, why is it? Why uh, is this Because so they're following the fuel ship? No, because here's the thing. I, every time we see him, he just gets bad news. Yeah, that's Continually true. bad news. Yeah. And he looks uh, like on the verge of like, what the? Yeah, every time we see him. What is wrong with this, you this people? Is what, this is how I usually see him. He starts out like this, looking at, because he's usually sitting down. And he looks up at whoever's talking to him. And then he goes. His, fa- his head just Just dropped. falls. He just falls. And you know, he just wants to blame that guy. Like, what? Is Get wrong off with you. my ship? Yeah. Do you yeah. really suck that <laughs> bad? I wonder. I wonder <laughs> yeah, how like. he is normally on day to day basis. His I don't know if he has a day to day basis. I mean, I think that's it. Maybe. I mean, people understand why he's. I mean, I understand why he is a it, hard ass. It takes huh? a particular person to be able to do this, and mm-hmm. I, the the happy go lucky guy is not it. Yeah. I mean, he literally, and rightfully so, you know, he one time the small boat crews were taking too long to get off and to get into the water. And he was like, you guys, you, like, what the hell is wrong with you? Get the boat in the effing water. Doesn't take much. Yeah. Go. And, yeah, they got the message. And, any, uh, does anyone fight with him? I haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. Uh, well, that Peter Brown. Really Peter Brown. Uh, second season. Yeah. Did, didn't of, he get booted? Uh, it, because of he that? got quote booted, but he got booted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so finally we have the good news, and lo and behold, uh, New Zealand gives us a call. Ring, ring. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, this is like two steps forward, three steps back. Yeah. And I feel yeah, this is I'm gonna borrow Breaking Bad's quote yeah. of uh, what uh, main character Walter White just so frustrated. Every time we move forward, we take forty steps back. Why is this happening? And you know that's that's what Paul Watson's so, mentality is. Yeah. Every time. And this is what I'm curious about. He goes, so you know that they have to go save somebody. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm wondering what I really want to know mm-hmm. what's in Paul's head. Well, is that person worth? The whales it's, uh, you that know, every, you know everybody's thinking that. Yeah, or 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 it's like, hey, look, they're human beings. They chose to be there. These whales didn't. Exactly. But so then I, I'm wondering like, how he tips the scales. Yeah. What his thought process? But no, he tips like, the scales. That could be us. You know, like what if we were like that, and then we would want people to come save yeah, us. Yeah. Or 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 is he as hard assed as we think? Because I don't I don't think there's anything out of his character that would say this. That that wouldn't say this. No, uh, that that's you made your bed. Yeah, and here's why he has, and here's why he can't. International law. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I don't that's know the, the law. That's the only the thing, thing he that has to. I think they have. They to. have to, yeah, because they yeah. said they have to stop doing their thing mm-hmm. until those people are saved. Yeah. But then I think that what or it looked dead. like. Oh yeah. I'm just saying. But it's an option. It looks really exciting. It's an option. <laughs> <laughs> really exciting, really I take, dramatic. I take option two, please. <laughs> it's really dramatic. What? Uh, really exciting, yeah. and I think that it's going to be like a new kind of war for them. All yeah. of them get excited. Really but can you easily. imagine? Say, ah, what? We have to go save these people? <laughs> Damn it! Oh, wow. and it's what two about the whales? people. Yeah, right. It's two people, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. But. Oh yeah, yeah. They, I think they said two or three or something. Oh, congratulations! Three I, people. I would just love that Paul argument. Watson's I'd love it out loud. I would out. love it on camera. Like, Why do we have to go save anybody? Look, we we got a job to do. Here. We're saving whales here. <laughs> exactly. Yes. One whale. Think of it. That just a mass alone. One whale is worth how many people? <laughs> exactly. Why, just by sheer mass. The whale could eat the people. The people could hang out in the whale. Like Pinocchio and Jonah, and then they'll save the whales so from the you're Japanese. You're saying if we can get the whales to save the people, yes, we can work as a team. We go to the Japanese and stop them from whaling. Why isn't she a captain of her own vessel? Thank you. Thank uh, you. She w- she was. Remember, we came up with that you were going to be the Bob Barker. <laughs> I was going to be the Steve Irwin. She's going to be the Gorgira. Gorgira. And uh, like on the. Never oh not. no! <laughs> Interpolate where I was going without fans. Anyways, I think uh, so. We're Going left with this cliffhanger, and um, let's uh, let's go to pro- let's go to commercial. Commercial. And come back with 
predictions. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This yeah. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. Like you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Nucky is a villain. 424 256 1729. 424 256 1729. I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig! Oh, come on. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. So, we just found out Michelle's goal in life is to go to every country. Oh, my God. Now you just told everybody that. Well, look, everybody's going to know because you're going to visit every country. Yeah, cool. that's true. And I already Oh, my God. It's true, like, what did I reveal? Like, some deep, dark secret? Like, what? Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's a noble goal. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> Michelle's going on a trip. To every country in the world. <laughs> All right, that's good. <laughs> that's a good one. Michelle's the singer. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Yeah, see, what do I get from my pain? Well, I think you could, you were the only person I could sing that song. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. All right, so. I have a prediction. I predict we are not going to see any of those cute little whale shots that we hope to have seen. No, again, I think this is a new season. <laughs> yeah, they're still figuring out how they want to tell it. But yeah, we haven't. Unfortunately, seen any. I don't think they're gonna show. Them. Unfortunately, we're not in the edit bay anymore. <laughs> exactly. But nonetheless, I find it a very good season. Um, and you know what? Even though it takes us off course and it takes us away from saving the whales, I think it'll be exciting in the regard that this is going to be something new. Yeah, because we've never seen anything like this, and we don't know how they're going to they're going to respond to something like this. Yeah, and I do. I I, I I'm really curious. I wish I had. I was in in the uh, or on deck when they were talking about this and whether or not they have any reservations about stopping their pursuit or <laughs> and going after these people. I got a thing. What's that? What Hold you off think? on your thing. Now, um, so the, the the boat of the people is missing, right? Or whatever? Yeah, there, something's up. I don't know what the... It'd be interesting. I want to know how big their boat is. Yeah. And if I was Paul Watson, I'd be on the phone with New Zealand. How big is their boat? Exactly. How Can fast we commandeer is it? this How fast is their boat? Thing? Exactly. That's are the they, payoff we want. Then, we will save them. And then, <laughs> are they vegans? Oh, uh, That might be no. the... Uh, if they're that's not straw, vegan. Wait, do straw, we know baby. what country they're from? The from back. New Zealand, like well, by no. all we know no. is that New Zealand is asking them to do something yeah. about it. What Where if, they're from, we don't know. What if they're from a country that has whalers? What if they're from a Japanese um, whaling company? That'll Roman. that'll be a conflict of interest. Well, the, but then they, but then that doesn't necessarily mean that they're whalers, and so then they could work together and have them trick. But the they're Japanese penguiners. Ships. They're penguiners. No. I, what? I didn't want them yeah. to be penguiners. He's not saying they are or that, that he wants them to be. He just they might be. Haven't you seen Happy Feet that do nothing for you? Okay, I've seen uh, Free Willy, and I love Free Willy. Yeah. And I want to <laughs> save the whales. Them, by the way. Highly underrated trilogy. There it is. So true. And, okay, <laughs> the Japanese have whalers. I'm not saying that's right, wrong, or whatever. I'm just saying... That's a fact. So, if they were penguiners, right. they were penguiners. Right. Any other anyway. predictions? Um, sure. I'm really excited. I think that maybe some people aren't going to be alive, and that they should put more whale shots in it in the show. That's a hope. Yeah, that's not really. That's a all hope. right. Well, <laughs> we thank you. Yes. Very good, Gene. Who is Gene? By the way, I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Who is Gene? Um, anyway, thank you for listening to another edition of Whale Wars. Whale Wars. Um, Stuart, we missed you. Look out Already. for us, for the whales. Stu, one of these days I'm going to plug your actual uh, phone number in my life crap. But nonetheless, if you have whale wishes for whale, whale wishes. wishes. Nice. Stu, I like it. Lil, info good. at AfterBuzzTV.com. Stu will be calling in from the Philippines. He's better. It's like a 16-hour difference. That Probably doesn't matter. He will be calling a date before we do the show. 
We'll record it and then air it. <laughs> nice. So that'll be interesting. Anyways, we thank you for listening. Uh, save the whales. I, I don't know why they still don't plug their plugs, yeah, they, but they, yeah. nonetheless, save the whales. Jesse, don't you have a thing that, uh, tonight? DJing gig now? No, next Friday. Next, next Friday. Friday. Right, tell sure tell the fans about it. about it. Real quick. Next Friday at the Bodcoat Lounge in downtown Los Angeles. So if, yeah. you're, if you live in L.A., plan on being in L.A., want to come out to L.A., now. there you go. There's, There's your the reason. place to be. Friday so, night. And, of course, MichelleMacedoMusic.com. Check it out on iTunes. It's great. They'll love it. Very soothing, much like the whale music yeah. in this. Anyways... And that, that is a compliment. We wish you the very best of weekends and keep saving the whales. We'll see you next week. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We just, got, we just got word. Where are you from? This is breaking news. Hello. We're going to extend the podcast. Caller, are you the, we just got a caller that we had oh. to get. Oh, man, that happens. Oh, thanks, Jess. That's a whale Glad the whales are calling. I hate when that happens. At least it wasn't like, were you guys on the show? Oh, Tamara and I were when uh, oh, the wrong number called. <laughs> He was like, who is this? Well, we missed out on that. All right. Well, thanks mm. for All right. thanks to DJ so Jesse for playing a prank on us. <laughs> Very funny. And let's buzz him later. Buzz, buzz you later. <laughs> buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.